If you were asked to model this table lamp, how would you go about it? Whoa, 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 wait, wait, you mean... Let me guess, you'd probably say to yourself, I can use a cylinder with 16 segments, adjust the position of the top and bottom vertices, scale them based on the reference, and then add a few edge loops in the middle, adjusting their scale to get the shape I want. Finally, you turn on Shader Smooth, throw on a subdivision surface modifier with the viewport level set to 2, and boom, done. But then you look at it and go, hmm, it doesn't quite match the reference. Let me tweak the edge loop scales a bit to get the right shape. Not bad at all, that's not a bad approach, but the truth is, it could be better. Why? Because if you look closely at the shading, you're gonna notice some distortion, and the surface doesn't look as smooth as it should be. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna click on this little arrow, then head over to the matcap and choose a shiny material. Let's go with this one. Now if I change the camera angle in the viewport, you're gonna see that distortion I was talking about is even more noticeable. So, what do you think is causing that? Where is the problem coming from? Hey everyone and welcome to the 10th episode of the free Blender story course from Zero to Andy's Room. In this episode, we're going to model this, a table lamp. We're gonna learn a technique that'll make modeling smooth surfaced objects like this way easier. This way, you won't run into shading issues and the surface will be super smooth and perfect. As always, don't forget to download the blueprints from the link in the description and then let's get started. All right. Have you thought about the question I asked earlier? What do you think is causing that shading problem? Well, one of the main reasons is that, as you can see, the mesh isn't evenly distributed. Notice how the spacing between the horizontal edge loops isn't equal. The uneven spacing is what's causing the shading issue. So this means we might need to use a different approach to model this part, something more precise. Okay, let's start. First, we need to create the profile of this shape using vertices. So I'm gonna press Shift A and add a single vertex, move it down, then extrude it to here. I'm gonna extrude again and quickly adding a few more vertices along the curve. Not too many and not too few. Okay, and for now, I'm not even worried about uneven spacing. Just like this. Okay, now I'm gonna add a subdivision surface. And if I switch back to object mode, you can see that this is the shape we've got. Now back in edit mode, we have the chance to even out the spacing between the vertices before moving on. It's very simple. Just select them, right click, and remember the loop tools add-on we installed in previous episodes? All you have to do is click space, and that will evenly distribute the vertices. Very easy, right? Now I'm gonna turn on the on cage option for the subdivision surface modifier here, and this hides the cage and let's us see the result of the modifier directly, which is super helpful in case like this. Next, I'm gonna select the vertices again and match them to the reference a bit more accurately. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna select them again, right click and choose a space again to even them out. Okay, I'm gonna select these two vertices, right click and choose subdivide to easily add another vertex in the middle of the edge. Then I'm gonna adjust its position a bit. All right, now let's move on to today's exciting new tool, which is Spin Tool. While in edit mode, press A to select all the vertices, then click on the Spin Tool here. I think this is the first time we're using the toolbar, right? So far, you've gotten used to these tools, but you've only been using their shortcut keys. Pretty cool, right? Just hover your mouse over each one, and you're gonna see its name and shortcut key. Looks familiar, doesn't it? All right, let's continue. So, the Spin Tool. When you select it, this widget shows up. You can click on this little plus icon and drag to spin the profile around a point. And it'll start adding geometry like this. Around what point, you ask? Great question. If I hold Shift and, for example, move my mouse here and right click, you're gonna see that the cursor moves to that point and along with it, the Spin Tool widget also moves. Now, if I click, you're gonna see that the spin happens around the cursor. So the cursor's position is super important here. Okay, let's press Shift S and select cursor toward origin to reset it to the center of the scene. And as you can see, the spin hasn't changed, but now if I click and drag, the spin happens relative to the new cursor position. So keep an eye on that. I'm gonna undo a few times to go back. When you select tools from the toolbar, you're gonna notice a toolbar setting appears up here. This lets you tweak some properties before using the tool. For example, with the Spin Tool, if you change the step count, fewer geometry pieces get added. You can also change the axis of the spin 
and make the profile rotate around a different axis, okay? I'm going to spin this along the z-axis. Now, this section over here shows the setting and properties for after we've used the tool, okay? So, this area is for before you use the tool, and this part is for after the last command you executed. For example, if I change the steps here at the top, nothing will happen. But if I use the widget again, those extra steps or segments will be added. All right, I undo a few steps. I'm gonna set the steps to 16, and here type 360 in the angle field, so the spin completes a full circle, okay? Now, if you tweak these options down here, it's pretty obvious what they do. These three values offset the spin axis relative to the cursor, and these three affect the rotation axis of the spin. If we change any of them to one, it's like enabling the X, Y, or Z axis up here. All right, let's turn on Shade Smooth, and we're done. Now you can see how much better this method is. The surface is smoother, the edges are more evenly spread, and the mesh is more organized. As a result, the shading distortion is minimized and barely noticeable anymore. And the cool thing is, you can even improve this further. To do that, we're gonna need to install an add-on that's super useful for modeling, and I highly recommend you install it. But this time, the installation process is a little different. The add-on I'm going to introduce is called Edgeflow, and I've left a link for it in the description. Click on it, then click on Code here, and select Download Zip. Now go to Preferences, click on Add-on tab, click on this little arrow, and choose Install from Disk. Then select the zip file you downloaded, and it'll be installed. Very easy, right? Now if you type flow, you're gonna see the add-on is installed and enabled. Okay, let's see how it works. I'm gonna select this edge loop, and if I right-click, you're gonna notice a new option has been added to the menu, set flow, right? Just click on set flow here, and if I switch to the front view, you can see what it does, right? It's very awesome. By using this add-on, you can even out edge loops. When you apply set flow to a selected edge loop, it averages the position of the selected edge loop based on the surrounding ones, allowing the edges to follow the overall shape more evenly. This makes the transition between edges look cleaner and less rigid, which is especially useful for maintaining smooth curved surfaces in your models. For example, if I bevel this edge and dissolve this one, you're gonna see that this surface becomes flat, right? If I add an edge loop here in the middle and apply a set flow, it adjusts the edge by averaging the neighboring ones, making the curve of this surface correct, just like it should be. Super useful, right? Okay, now let's get back to our model. Here I'm going to select the edges I want to apply set flow to them to smooth out the surface. And yes, there you go. You can see that it's even better than before. Awesome. Let's continue modeling the other parts. All right, I'm gonna zoom in here a bit. Press C for select circle and choose these faces. Then press X and delete them. Now I'm gonna select this edge loop, scale it a bit, then press E to extrude it upwards. Okay, now I'm gonna press E again, S to scale it down a little. I'm gonna extrude it again up to this point. Next, I'm gonna select this edge loop, press Ctrl B to bevel it. I'm gonna press C for clamp to ensure the components don't overlap and scroll up to add a few extra edges and click. Now you can see the vertices are stacked on top of each other. So A, M, and choose by distance. And that's that. Now I'm gonna press Ctrl R and add supportive edge loop here to make this edge appear sharper. For this part, I'm gonna add a few more edge loops here as well and I'm gonna add another one around here to sharpen this edge too. Okay, for this part, I'm gonna add an edge loop here, press Ctrl B for a bevel, and create this space without adding an edge in the middle. Now press Alt E, select extrude faces along normals, and extrude the faces outward. Okay, I'm gonna select these two edge loops, press Ctrl B and bevel them. I'm gonna also adjust the scale a bit. Okay, the vertices are stacked again, so press A, M and merge by distance. All right, as you can see, when this part is smooth, it doesn't exactly match the reference, but that's okay, because it's not always necessary to match the reference exactly. As you model, just make sure different parts fit well together and look proportional. If they do, you're good. 
Remember, it's just a reference, and if you can make the model even better, don't hesitate. Personally, I think this part doesn't need to stick out too much. All right, now let's move on to filling this section. I'm gonna select this edge loop, press E and then S to scale it inward slightly. Now press M and choose at center to merge them all in the middle. You're gonna notice that all the faces here are triangles, but since they are on a flat surface and this part is usually not visible, it's fine. Okay, if you want, you can bevel this edge a little just to make it sharper. Okay, let's move on to filling the bottom part. There are a bunch of vertices here in the middle that haven't merged. Again, I'm gonna use select circle to select these faces and delete them. I'm gonna select this edge loop, then press M and choose merge at center. All right, now I'm gonna select this edge loop and bevel it to make it sharp. And that's it for the body of the table lamp. All right, now let's move on to creating the lamp itself. Okay, I'm gonna switch to front view and add a single vertex, moving it to the top, press E and extrude it down to the bottom. I'm gonna select both vertices, right click and choose subdivide. And as you can see, it subdivides the edge. I'm gonna increase the number of cuts to seven. Now I'm gonna select the vertices one by one and repositioning them according to the reference. Okay, I'm gonna bring it here. All right, that looks good. Next, I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and enable this option. I'm gonna select these two vertices. I'm gonna subdivide it again and adjust its position. Now I'm gonna select them all, right click, go to loop tools and select space. Okay, I'm gonna select everything, click on a spin and rotate it like this. Here I'm gonna change the steps to 16 and in the angle section, I'm gonna type 360. All right, let's switch back to object mode and enable shader smooth. Okay, I'm gonna go into local view and remember, Whenever you use the spin tool, always think about merging the vertices. As you can see, the vertices at the top and bottom of this object need to be merged. So press A, M, and by distance. I'm gonna exit local view, and now I'm gonna adjust the top vertex a bit higher, and the bottom one lower. Okay, the shading issue you see at the top and bottom of the lamp doesn't matter because these parts won't be visible up close. However, since we care about improving our modeling and solving issues, let's fix this problem. Okay, I'm gonna select this vertex, press Ctrl B and then V to bevel it slightly and delete this face. Okay, I'm gonna disable this option so I can see the cage or the original mesh. All right, now I'm gonna select this edge loop, press E, then S and scale it inward a bit. Then go to the face menu up here and select grid fill. Now I'm gonna switch to the top view all right, here the span is set to four, which is fine since these two middle edges are perpendicular to each other. Okay, now I'm gonna select this edge loop and bevel it. And lastly, I'm gonna select all the vertices, press M and merge by distance. All right, now let's select this middle vertex. And if I move it up like this, you can see that the result isn't great, right? And this is where a super important tool comes into play called proportional editing. Okay, you can enable it here or use the shortcut key O. Just make sure to remember it, okay? When this option is active and you press G for move, you're gonna see a circle around your mouse. If you can't see the circle, just scroll until it becomes smaller and visible. You can also see its size here at the top, okay? You can change its size by scrolling and any component inside this circle will be affected proportionally by the transformation. Right now, we're using move, right? So I'm gonna limit it to the Z axis and adjust the shape like this. Okay, that looks good. To understand it better, let's take this plane as an example. If I select this vertex and move it while proportional editing is active, you're gonna see that the selected vertex is affected the most and the surrounding vertices which are inside the circle are influenced less and less as they move further from the center of the circle. We also have different profiles here, and if you switch to a side view, you can easily see that each profile moves the vertices exactly as its icon suggests. This feature isn't limited to edit mode either. As you can see in this example, these cubes are separate meshes. When proportional editing is active and I move this middle cube, you're gonna notice it affects the other cubes too. It's a very, very useful feature. 
please make sure to always disable proportional editing after using it because it's really common to forget turning it off just like I did in this video. I forget to switch it off so from now on keep in mind that proportional editing should be turned off to avoid any issues. Okay let's get back to modeling. I'm gonna select this edge loop and apply set flow and there you go. Finally select any edges that you think need edge flow and apply it to them as well. It's that simple. Okay now you're gonna notice that the shading here looks much better than before right? Okay that's it for the lamp part. The bottom part isn't even visible and sure we could fix it too but there is no need at this point. As I mentioned this part won't be seen in the project so it doesn't make sense to spend time on it. You know that it's not possible for the lamp to stand like this right? So this part needs more detail in modeling but in real world production projects you don't need to spend too much time on parts that aren't visible. Of course if we were creating a product visualization video for this table lamp we definitely need to focus on such details okay? Anyway that's it for this section. Now let's move on to the remaining parts and finish up. For this part I'm gonna add a cylinder with 16 vertices. I'm gonna move it up a bit and match the bottom vertices to the reference by scaling them. I'm gonna do the same with the top vertices. Then I'm gonna delete the top and bottom faces. I'm gonna press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier with viewport levels set to 2 and also add a solidify modifier. Okay I'm gonna give it some thickness and enable shade auto smooth. Now I'm gonna duplicate this object, right click to reset its position, hide the original object and apply the modifiers. I'm gonna add an edge in the middle here and another edge here at the bottom. I'm gonna select both, press shift D to duplicate them then right click to confirm and while they're still selected press P and then choose selection to separate them into two individual meshes. I'm gonna delete this object since we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna also convert this one into a curve and then unhide the original object. Click on the curve data properties icon and under geometry and bevel hold shift and adjust the depth. Okay and that's it. Now I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and enable shade smooth for it too. That's it for this part. Now let's move on to the remaining sections which I'm sure won't be too hard for you now. Okay let's wrap this up quickly. First I'm gonna select this vertex, press shift s, cursor to select it. Now I'm gonna add a cylinder, scale it down, rotate it 90 degrees, adjust its position, make it a bit smaller and move it here. Then I'm gonna move these vertices over here. All right in object mode I duplicate it, move it over here. Uh, let me scale it down okay. Now I'm gonna move these vertices over here, scale them up a bit and move these vertices here and scale them down. All right now I'm gonna activate shade auto smooth for both of them and using ctrl 2 I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier with a level of 2. Now I'm gonna select these edge loops and bevel them. I'm gonna press P and set the profile to 1 by just simply moving my mouse. Let me reduce the width a little here. All right now let's go to the edge loops on this object, select them and bevel these as well. And there you have it. The modeling of the table lamp is now complete. All right everyone, I hope you enjoyed this part too and until the next episode, goodbye.